end. And today, I think today, today, yeah, we are starting with our new series here yes. in church, Emotional Healthy Church, and yeah, we want to invite our uh, Pastor Eddie. Yes, who's going to bring a wonderful word, word this morning? Yes, a very powerful one. Now, let me tell you something about Pastor Eddie. He is really a Holy Spirit guy. So uh, I know that uh, he has something really that, um, that a, a, a powerful word for you this morning. So I want you, I want to encourage you to just be leaning on, taking notes and open your heart to the Holy Spirit, which is in you because he's going to communicate a lot this morning. Yeah. Enjoy the preach, everyone. Welcome, Eddie. Thanks, Pau and Jan. Uh, nobody ever has called me Holy Spirit guy. Uh, pretty amazing. Um, hello to you in uh, Darmstadt. Hello to you all over Frankfurt. Hello to you all over the world. If you got the link from somebody and you're not even in Germany. And hello to you if you're listening after the fact. If you're not with us live but maybe you're driving in the car, you're on a train, uh, you're re-watching us on YouTube. Hello to you wherever you are in time and space. We're super happy. Um, what's up, Hope City, Darmstadt? What's up, Hope City, Frankfurt? We are starting, and um, Jan and Paude mentioned this already, we are starting a preaching series that is based on this book, Emotionally Healthy Church by Peter Skazero. There's also a workbook with it. We have just recently relaunched our connect groups and um, we're super excited to do this transition as a church. If you have, have not heard, and have not been part of the Sunday services, we are uh, in quite a transition as a church as uh, the pastors, Steve and Siobhan, they're moving on and moving back to the UK. And uh, myself, uh, Eddie and Laura will be taking over the leadership of the church. And um, it, it's not the only transition. Of course, we also in number five of our online services. Um, and you yourself probably find yourself also in transition somewhere maybe in your job, maybe in a relationship. And here's what uh, we want to do in the next couple of weeks. We want to handle transitions, but life in general, well. We want to handle transitions, but life in general, emotionally healthy. And this is what we're gonna be speaking about uh, in the next couple of weeks. And, um, uh, here's a couple of things before I start uh, this uh, talk, uh, this preach, this series. Um, I have brought a prop, as you can see. Uh, this is a prop that uh, one of my children and his cousin, they, they built this yesterday night. Uh, I asked them, I gave them instructions, they built this. Thank you, Elliot and Sammy, if you're watching uh, for this amazing prop. You can see this is a Minecraft Jesus, right? And it was based on the fact that my daughter, Kira, she said, Daddy, when you're preaching, please make it kid-friendly. But I believe this is not only going to be for kids, and this is going to help me to make one of my points later on. Um, I would like to invite you, if you don't have anything to write right now, uh, maybe a piece of paper, a pencil, a pen, or on your phone, please grab that. You will need that later on. Okay, you will need that towards the end um, uh, of our preach here. Uh, you will need something to write. So please get ready to take notes and uh, something of a homework, if we can call it like that. And uh, the third thing is, um, I would like you to think about where you are in your emotional healthy state, rather to rate you, okay? Specifically the discernment, because today the first uh, topic uh, of the series is to go below the surface. To go 
below the surface and to look beneath the surface and what is really going on in our lives, not just at the top. I'm not sure if you ever have seen uh, this, this famous picture that is on the internet um, and on pictures in general and in a lot of metaphors, um, this iceberg picture where you have the top of the iceberg that's above water and beneath it is actually um, three-fourths of it or nine-tenths out of it is beneath it, right? And so you cannot see it, but it's there, and it's, it's this big mass. And that is how it is also in our, um, in our lives, in our spiritual lives as well, in our emotional lives as well. There's something that people can see. There's other, see, people can observe it, something that we can see, but there's much, much more. The bigger part is underneath. And I would like you to rate right now, just think, don't, don't share it with your neighbors on the couch or whoever is watching, but just think, how good are you? How good are you at looking beneath the surface? At being aware what is actually the bigger part that impacts your life and also inevitably the lives of others, the lives of other people around you. Think about that. Would you rate yourself as a beginner and say, okay, yeah, I, I, I am pretty good at being connected with myself, but I still have a lot to learn. Maybe you would say, well, I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, um, I already know this topic is familiar to me. I uh, uh, have uh, done some research or uh, I have gone on a spiritual retreat or I'm pretty good about uh, being self-aware in general. You know, a lot of times, especially in Christian circles, and if you're not a Christian, it's totally cool that you're watching, totally cool that you're here. You gotta get a good idea of uh, what, it, what it means to, to, to go and, and, and explore what is inside of you today. But it doesn't matter. Maybe you say, yeah, I'm pretty good at being self-aware, right? Uh, a lot of times we can be very self-conscious but not very self-aware. There's a difference between that. Okay, and then um, maybe you are pro. Okay, maybe you are pro, and you say, "Listen, Eddie, I I have actually read that book already. It's been out for a while. I have read that book. I have read many, many other books about this. I am pretty good at knowing, and I quickly can classify what's not just there, above the surface, the iceberg." but also beneath the surface. And I'm not only just good at quantifying or qualifying it, I am also good at addressing it, at, at checking what is going on, and then moving it into a healthy direction. Now, here's what the Bible says, okay? Here's what the Bible says um, in Psalm 18, verse 12, 20, it says, God made my life complete when I placed all the pieces before him. This is the message translation. In uh, German um, and in other English translations, it, it says God put me in a wide space, in a space that's spacious, that's wide, that, that has room, breathing room for me. And then it continues, when I got my act together, self-awareness, he gave me a fresh start. Now I'm alert to God's ways, and I don't take God for granted. Every day I review his ways, the way he works, I try not to miss a trick. I feel put back together, and I'm watching my step. God rewrote the text of my life when I opened the book of my heart to his eyes. God rewrote the text of my life. God is writing a story, your story, my story, our story. God is writing history right now. God did that when I opened the book of my heart to his eyes. Now, I would like to put forth a statement Okay, and this is going to be a statement that's going to that's going to lead us in the next 20, 25 minutes, and that statement is, looking beneath the surface, and addressing what you find in faith, and in a healthy way, will bless you and others for generations to come. 
Let me say that again because this is super important to lean in wherever you are. Looking beneath the surface and addressing what you find in faith and in a healthy way will bless you and others for generations to come. What are the components of looking beneath the surface? The first one is being aware of what's going in inside of you and not just being aware of what's going on inside, but also the why behind it. Okay, let me explain this and let me drive this picture of this iceberg home. I could not draw a picture, but let's just say, right, this is the stuff, okay? This is the stuff that we see. This is not only the stuff that we see, this is also the stuff that's open to the public, right? It's, it's how we dress, how we talk, how we walk, how we react, uh, how we laugh, how we cry, all that stuff, that's, that's it, okay? But you can see, right, as we have said, and uh, it is true, there's also stuff underneath, okay? So this is the stuff we see up here, and then this is the stuff that is underneath. These are our emotions. Some of us are showing them more than others. Children are really good at that, right? If you are a parent, you know, right? Your child, if your child is upset, you know it, right? If your child is happy, you know it, right? Now, as we go through life, we grow up, we learn how to control it, and a lot of times, what is up here, sorry, you probably can't hear me right now if I move with this mic, what is up here is connected to what is down here. And now, we are pretty good in our lives today, we are super good at social media, right? to project a certain image up here. But then there's all the stuff that's beneath the surface. And here's, here's my third illustration. Um, here's what's happening. Over time, the stuff that's happening down here impacts what is happening up here. And sometimes we cannot see it, but inevitably, it will come out. So if you're healthy inside, right, you will be healthy on the outside. If you're emotionally healthy inside, it will show in the way you act, in the way you speak, in the way you make your life decisions, right? And here's why this is so important. If we are not connected to it, right, we will try to fix things on the surface, on the top, but we'll never get anywhere. It's, it's, almost, it's almost like a band-aid that you put over a wound that actually needs to be like, you know, addressed, maybe disinfected, it needs to heal properly. But we're putting stuff on there, why? Because we're not addressing the stuff on the top and we're projecting a certain image. <laughs> but underneath it, the stuff stays unaddressed, but it directly impacts what's happening above. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, when I, for the very first time in my life, realized that that's the case. Now, uh, I have grown up in a, a going to church. Um, as long as I can remember, um, I have been singing Christian songs. Um, I have read the Bible. Um, from an early age, uh, I have heard the story of David and Goliath and of, of Noah and of Moses, of Jesus, his miracles. I have memorized scripture and all that stuff, okay? And, and I can say pretty good, like up until five, six years old, I considered myself a pretty good boy, okay? Like, I mean, I had my faults and I, I, I did um, um, sometimes argue with my siblings and everything, but if you would have asked me, right, are you a good boy when I was little, I would have raised my hand and I would have said, yes. But all that, something happened, something shattered my good boy image when the following thing happened. One time, I remember, we were living in a multi-story house, right, in a complex. We were living on uh, the second floor. And uh, my mom asked me to take out the trash, which involved me putting my shoes on, going downstairs, uh, quite smelly stuff, right? 
and then putting it away and then coming back. And as every good boy, I said, yeah, of course, no problem. But you know what happened? On the outside, it was all good. But on the inside, I don't remember why, but I felt disturbed. I didn't want to do it. I felt angry. And so here's what happened. Um, I went down, I took out the trash, and, um, and then I went up again, and I went to, to a, into a bathroom, into a dark bathroom. I didn't turn on the light. And then I, um, well, I cast out my mom <laughs> in a different language. Some, some of you know which language it is. And there are cuss words in that language that I don't know where they came from. Oh, my goodness. And here's the thing. I was surprised and shocked myself. I was like, oh, my, what, where is this coming from? And this is the time that I realized that there's some more stuff going on, right? That uh, there is above the surface. Why is that important? I, I think it is important to acknowledge that we, want, that we all want to achieve things in life. We all want to get, become better. We don't want to be know-it-alls. We want to be learn-it-alls. And uh, right, the biggest motivation for us, in your workplace, in church, in your family, when you see that things are moving ahead and going on for the better. Like, I have not met anybody in my life that says, hey, I just want to stay the way I am. I don't want to get better. I'm fine. I don't want to learn anything new. Uh, some of us are more motivated than others, but I think if you look deep inside of yourself, you do want to improve. You want to contribute. You want to be the hero or somebody who, who kind of changes stuff, right, in our lives. And so for that, in order to do that, it is super important to understand what is happening underneath the surface is impacting what is happening above. And so the suggestion that the Bible has for us, that Jesus has for us, the suggestion that this book is talking about, and we'll be talking about it and also in our connect groups in the coming weeks, is to see and address that in a bold manner, directly. And sometimes, sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's easier to just stay above the surface and not address the stuff because, you know, it can be ugly. It can be difficult. We are confronted with ourselves and our weaknesses. And here's where we get to the second point. In order to do that well, we need to link our emotional health to what Jesus did for us. In order to become emotionally healthy, to have a good relationship with God, with others, and with ourselves, it is very, very important to connect what Jesus did for us with whatever we want to do in that area. You know, as I said, I've been a Christian all, um, all my life. I've been walking around in different churches in different styles on different continents. And we know what I realized, especially when I talk to people who uh, have not grown up the way I did, or who are maybe skeptical of the church, maybe have been hurt by the church, maybe uh, have a problem with the institutional church or in general with some teachings or whatever. You know what they say? A lot of times you hear, I don't have a problem with God, but I have a problem with his ground personnel. Have you ever heard that? Right? People don't have a problem with an entity or with a picture or an image of a loving God or maybe even with Jesus, right? But they have a problem with his people. Why? Well, the elephant in the room there is hypocrisy. And hypocrisy is the following. This is, this is the definition. If you Google it, if you look it up, here's the definition. Hypocrisy is the practice of claiming to have higher standards or more noble beliefs than it is the case. Again, surface. 
right? I have this standard. This is what we're talking about. This is what I believe. This is what I want to live and everything. And then I have a lot of the stuff underneath. And these two things, they do not match up. And the issue is that people look at us and then they observe. And again, to just bring the parenting example, but you also know this with your boss, right? You, you know this with your teachers, you know this with your professors. The ones that we admire, they are connected. The surface is connected with, with the stuff that, that they say that they have as high standards and they, they actually do. And you know what? Um, I don't want to address this. This is real. And if you have been hurt by church, then I want to say I'm sorry. If you have been hurt by people who have had pushed other standards on you, but have not been living them out themselves, then I'm sorry. And let me tell you, that is not what Jesus and who Jesus is and what he imagined for his church. And we could talk about this for a while, but I want to link this again. I want to link this dynamic because when it comes to that, and uh, whenever we are in an environment, maybe in church, but maybe also in, in social settings outside of church, here's the dynamic that happens. We want to be authentic, and our culture nowadays more than ever welcomes authenticity. But then we say, in church we say this, what would the other people think? What would God think? Can I, can I do this? Right? And then outside of church, we're like, well, you know, what if my image that I project to the outside, what if it is broken? What happens then? And underneath it is a, a very, very big desire to be accepted, to be loved, to be part of something, and uh, to, to be who you are and to be loved as you are. Now, let's, let's address this real quick, and this is where we get to our prop here. Um, if you believe in Jesus, here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, God made him, Jesus, who had no sin, who did not leave away, who, um, who um, did not do anything wrong, to be sin for us. So that he, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 21. In Romans it says, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In Colossians chapter 3 it says, we are hidden in Christ. Here's why this is important. Especially in an emotionally church setting, it is super important that we understand this. It is important, why? Because we feel like if I have to address that what is on the, on the, underneath the surface, if I have to address the addiction that I secretly have, the emotions that might not all be positive, um, my inner thought life, maybe the anxiety, maybe the depression, maybe whatever you are struggling with, what will God think? How would God see me? How will others see me? And I would like, I would like to uh, do this following picture. Here's what the Bible says on a very, very deep theological level. Right? I, if you have studied this a little bit, then you know about substitutionary atonement and the imputation of the righteousness of Christ. Forget all these words. You don't need to know that. Here's what you need to know. Here's what you need to know. When God looks at you, he sees Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, and if you say, Jesus, help me with my life. I believe you are the truth, the way, and the life. If you do that, right, and if you confess his name since yesterday or for decades already, Right? In whatever language, in whatever church, in what, what, whatever setting, whatever it is, if you have done that, then whenever God looks at you, he sees Jesus. Let me, me, let's make it more clear, okay? So here, I asked my children to help me. Here, this is, this is a, a lady policeman, right? Maybe there's a lady policeman watching right now. Hi, thanks for, uh, for being who you are, okay? Lego. 
and uh, I'm going to put this. I know you will not be able to see it because it's so small, but I'm just going to put it here. Oops. She fell down. I hope you don't have a concussion. Sorry. There you go. And then um, my uh, kids picked out something what, that I would consider a hipster guy. He's got a mustache, okay? Uh, he, over here, uh, this is the guy. And um, if we are, we are looking at this, okay? We are standing there and we're saying, God sees all my mistakes. God sees all my failures. God sees all this stuff. And I don't even want to address it because it is so painful. I have to not only wrestle with my own standards and my own hypocrisy maybe, but also with the standards that God's and his word put upon me. And you know, this is how I walked through my life. Since I understood what Jesus did for me, but did not accept what Jesus did for me. For all my teenage years, here's, here's what happened, right? Here's what happened. Let's say I was pretty cool and I was a good boy on the outside. I had issues to deal with on the outside, uh, um, on the inside. And here's what happened. Every time I, 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 I walked through life confident but cautious, you know, here's why. Because I thought whenever I would do something wrong, God would come with his big um, uh, fly swatter or hammer or whatever and, and just whack me like this. Until I understood the Father heart of God is the following. When Jesus looks at me, actually, when Jesus looks at you, I am hidden with Christ. So when Jesus looks at me, he only sees what Jesus did for me. That's how he can forgive. That's how a righteous God can forgive. He just looks and he doesn't see my shortcomings, my mistakes, my addiction, my anxiety, whatever it is. He looks and says, you are cool. You're good. We're in good standing. You're accepted. You're loved just the way you are because of what Jesus did for us. And then there's no fear to address the stuff underneath the surface because it doesn't matter. I can come, be secure, and say, God, here I am. Do something with this. And now... Um, and the final point, I would like to very practically talk to you guys about how that happens. How does that happen? Because we know that it doesn't depend on anything that we do. Jesus is there. He died for us. We are alive in him. And yet, we all agree we want to live a healthy life. There are still issues that have to be worked out. Right? There's still stuff that God wants to address with us. And here's, here's what you need to know about me. I, I, I would love to be very fast in everything. Right? I, sometimes I sit in meetings and uh, we're working towards a conclusion. I'm already there. Sometimes wrongly, sometimes rightly. But I'm there most of the time. Right? Sometimes when, uh, when I, uh, I go shopping... Especially in Corona times, I wish, you know, there would be like some kind of robot that does it for me and, and I just like do something else very fast, right? Sometimes it is hard for me and sometimes it is also hard for you if you think about it to go through the process we just want the result. But God in his mercy and in his love for us, he says, hey, let's go through this process together. Here's how we do it. Here's how we become emotionally healthy and this is how how he has instituted this, how, how he imagined it. Focus on what counts and you will become whole. So for him, it's not so much about the surface and the image that we can project. For him, Luke 6, 43, 45 says, you know, you bring, right, the stuff up from the surface. And if it's good stuff that is stored up here, then you will bring up good stuff. A healthy tree brings forth healthy fruit. An unhealthy tree will bring an unhealthy fruit, right? And so here's, here's what it says. Your true being brims over in true words and deeds. If it is in here, how do we get there? Well, I think it has a lot to do with confidence and not being afraid. Let me tell you one of the scariest experiences that I've have ever had in my life. 
um, it was in, um, in Jerusalem, in the city of Jerusalem. There is an ancient tunnel that has been dug from a, a well, um, and it has been dug through bedrock, solid bedrock, through a mountain. Okay, it was done over 2,700 years ago. You can look it up on YouTube if you're interested. Hezekiah's tunnel. Okay, um, and, and it basically it, it connects with a spring, and then it. Uh, the spring was going down the mountain. They, they diverted it through the bedrock, 500 meters long, right? A tunnel that's big, and uh, it was about 100 six, uh, meters 60, right? So I had to like go through there, and I walked through this tunnel. We were with a tour group, and there were two ways to get to get there, right? To get to the to the to the pool there where it comes out. There were ways like with normal stairs and everything, and then you can go through this tunnel. And um, our guide he said, hey, you you can do this, right? You can bring your sandals and you can go through that or you can come with me. And then we were standing there was a group of 12 people and everybody went the safe and secure, not so, uh, I would say, uh, claustrophobic way. And I decided to go uh, by myself alone into that tunnel. Now, I, I have never experienced anything like this, okay? There's a water ankle deep, right? Warm water, I, I'm in my sandals. I have only my flashlight, my backpack and I'm going, and it is half a kilometer. For the Americans watching, yes, it is a, a, a third of a mile, okay? And then, and, and then you realize when you turn it off, it's pitch black and you just hear the water. You know, and I was walking about halfway through and I said, shucks, what if somebody, like what if suddenly the spring like starts having more water and I'm just gonna get washed down, right? What if I like have a, like I don't know, a panic attack or something, I, I don't know, it's really scary, right? And I turned off the light and it was nothing. And I'm in the middle, like I'm in the middle of a mountain. But you know what happened then? From underneath the surface, something arose in me, something that was there, something, a confidence and something strong that helped me to get through to the other side, right? And I realized that in these kinds of situations where I feel um, where, where there's a challenge, I'm pretty good about like channeling my inner strength and my inner eddy and uh, bringing strength out of that. But there are other situations where I'm not as good. And let me tell you one of them. One of them is, we, we, uh, if you know us, we have four children, and uh, I, I've been to the emergency room more than you can think. Not with myself, but with the kids. And I have to say that uh, between Laura, my wife, uh, and me, she handles an emergency, hi honey, she handles an emergency much, much better than I do. Like when I see the first drop of blood, when I see that my kids get hurt, like I'm panicking. I'm like, what do we gotta do? What is going on? Whose fault is it? I'm trying to discipline the other kids, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? So I have things that have been already established inside of me and there's others that God is still working on. And I think in this, God wants to position us and say, Eddie, I will help you with the stuff where you need help. Whatever your name is, Maria, Peter, whoever, whatever, God speaks your name and says, listen, there are some things inside of you that are already strong and some things we need to work on. And because of this, you don't need to be afraid we get to work in it together. We can bring it to the surface, and together we will bring emotional health in there. Here's what we read in the beginning. God rewrote the text of my life. God will rewrite your story. God will enter your story. God will bring something good out of that. Emotional health, strength, purpose. When I opened the book of my heart, to his eyes. Here's our call to action this morning. This is what I want to close with. Why is this so important? If we want to lead a healthy, spiritually healthy, emotionally healthy, relationship-wise healthy life, you will have to bring stuff to the surface and deal with it. And you know what? Leaders, teachers, parents, students, whatever it is, 
we will bring forth, we will multiply that what is inside of us, not the image that we project. The good treasure that is here, that's what we will multiply, and that's ultimately what will change the world. Remember in the beginning of the sermon, I asked you, where would you classify yourself? If you classified yourself as a beginner and you say, hey, Eddie, I have no clue, but this really speaks to me. I really don't. I feel like this is touching me. This message is touching me. The, the Bible verses that you read, this image, it's touching me, and I want to start today. Here's how you start. Whenever you realize that there's something going on, on in, underneath the surface, here's what I want you to do. Pray this prayer. This is what you need to write down. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me. It's called the Jesus Prayer has been used for centuries to sort out stuff, to do things, to, to address and, and bring stuff to the surface without knowing what it is. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. When you have a lack of words, when you know what's going on, when you just feel like, Jesus, please sort it out, do that. If you classify as a, yourself as an intermediate, somewhere in between, you say, hey, I, I'm pretty good. I, I can do this. I'm pretty good. I'm in touch with myself. Here's what I want you to do for the next week. I want you to take some time every morning, and I would like you to ask yourself three questions and to really answer them, not on a surface level, but on a deep level. Ready for the three questions? Pen in hand, fingers on the tie pad. How is my relationship to Jesus? Do you still believe this? Do you still see this? Or do you come into his presence with shame? How is my relationship to the people around me? Maybe it's not God who you have a problem with, but maybe it's your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, somebody at work. God wants to address this. If it simmers underneath the surface too long, not good. Answer that question. And the third one, how is the relationship to myself? Three questions, really simple. And if you notice, if you address this with the focus, you will see that the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you will bring in health. Oh, you consider yourself a pro? Well, here's what I got for you. Every morning, every night, 10, 15 minutes exercise. 10, 15 minutes exercise of quieting yourself down and coming to Jesus and asking, what surprised me today? What filled me with joy and energy? What were my highlights? What made me laugh? Okay? Try to answer these questions, but then you turn around. What touched me? What did not work so well? What do I regret? And then talk to God about this experience. Take time for that, and you will see how the Holy Spirit will address these issues. But not only address them, He will heal them. And you know, imagine if we do that today. If we imagine if we do that for this week. Imagine if we do that everyone in our church, in our families. I think here's what's going to happen. We will never be the same. Our communities will never be the same. Our relationships will never be the same. Because the big stuff that is underneath, the self-awareness stuff, will be addressed. And it will come to an emotionally healthy state. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for us today that the Holy Spirit comes and does that for us. God, we thank you for what you have done for us through Jesus, that we can come before your throne boldly, we can come before your throne in faith, and that you call us to do that because whatever we do in your name, Whatever we change inside of us in your name, whatever you change, Holy Spirit, will have a positive impact on us, on our decisions, on our lives, Lord Jesus. And so we ask you for strength. We ask you for discernment. 
we ask you for a view of grace. We want to look at it through your eyes. I want to tell you today, wherever you are, whatever you do, if you are insecure about this, let me tell you that you, with Jesus on your side, you cannot lose. You cannot lose with Jesus on your side. And so we pray, God, that as we start the series, that you help us individually and as a church to go deep below the surface and really transform the things that you want transformed. Your will be done, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done, your kingdom come in Hope City. Your will be done, your kingdom come in our lives, in our families, in our communities, here in Germany, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.